Mel Tucker, start earning that money. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Power 5 schedules for 2020, including not our final prediction, but our record projection here in the spring with no spring football, of course. Uh, but uh, we will have a tighter grip on personnel groupings and uh, the outlook for 2020 with our final predictions in August. But for right now, we're going to have some fun with our record projection and invite you to leave your record projection and your thoughts on Michigan State football down in the comments section below. Like, comment, as we just mentioned, share the videos on social media, and of course, subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. And that's the way you turn on the bell for the notifications and you know when we're going live. Let's talk Michigan State football. And this is considered a big job. This is considered one of the better football programs in the country because of what Mark D'Antonio accomplished, not because Michigan State is a tremendous program. Mark D'Antonio's Michigan State football program was tremendous from 2010 until 2016. Let's make a differentiation there. Michigan State football from the mid-70s through the 80s and 90s, up until Mark Antonio took over and turned around the program in 2007, was a marginal football program. Marginal. Think Kentucky. Think Mississippi State. Think Boston College. That was Michigan State football from all that time. Uh, if, if you track Michigan State's records through that time, you're going to find a couple peaks winning the Rose Bowl in 1988 over USC under George Perlis. Uh, the 1999 team was really good with Plexigo Burris. They beat Florida in the Citrus Bowl, finished 10-2 and and in the top 10 in the country. But other than that, during all those 11-game seasons, a ton of 6-5, and 7-4, and 5-6, and six, back and forth. Michigan State, I guarantee it, I've not done the math, but between about 1975 and and 2007, when D'Antonio took over, won just about 55% of their games. Barely made bowl games most of the time. Mark D'Antonio made this a power. They won the Rose Bowl. They won the Cotton Bowl. They beat Georgia in an Outback Bowl in double overtime. They finished in the top 10 in the nation four times. They won three Big Ten championships. They made the college football playoff in 2015. Then it all came off the rails to a certain extent. They have been decent since 2016. They had the 10-3 and three finish, top 15 in the country in 2017. But other than that, 3-9 and nine was the big crash after the college football playoff appearance. Uh, and then a couple 7-6s and sixes the past two years, including D'Antonio's final game at the Pinstripe Bowl, in which they defeated Wake Forest to finish again 7-6, and 4-5 and five in the Big Ten. And there was much optimism entering 2019, with all those starters back, including quarterback Brian Lewerke, who moves on uh, after a long career at Michigan State. So now Mel Tucker takes over from Colorado. They paid him a boatload of money to get things done in Michigan State. And for a number of reasons, I believe this is one of the tougher jobs in the country. Please check out the video in which I outlined my reasons why I believe this is a very difficult place to win and will be in the future. Uh, again, my thoughts on D'Antonio's job and his performance and exit at Michigan State, and my thoughts on Mel Tucker coming in from Colorado. Please check out the video. I will leave it down in the description section. All right, let's talk Michigan State for 2020. The W's, L's, and T's are because these are the games that I would expect that team to win, almost for sure, no sure thing. Uh, Michigan State, even under D'Antonio, even some of their really good teams struggled with MAC teams early in the season. Look at the uh, game logs from the D'Antonio era against MAC teams. They always won the games, but more times than not, they were dogfights. So even the Toledo game at home in week three is no give me for Michigan State. So there are very few give me's for this team in transition. They've got a number of losses almost for sure, and then a number of toss-ups as well. All right, let's start at the top with a rare Big Ten opener. So the Big Ten going to more conference openers uh, this season than ever before. Wisconsin takes on Indiana on a Friday night, and we've got this game with Northwestern visiting Michigan State. That's a toss-up. Wildcats coming off a bad year at 3-9 and nine should be better. 
Uh, Michigan State's got a difficult non-conference road here with BYU, Toledo, and Miami. Uh, when the Miami-Michigan State series was signed, I was excited to see two potential really good uh, conference contenders in the ACC and the Big Ten, but not so much, uh, especially on the Michigan State side. They host Miami in the first of a home-and-home -home series in 2020 and 2021. Again, the BYU game will be difficult. This is uh, the return visit from a home-and-home -home series in which Michigan State lost to BYU at home a few years ago. Then they dive into Big Ten play, and this is the first time, if you checked out the other videos, I, I have not done anything like this to point out the toughest stretch, but I did it in particular for Michigan State to outline this murderer's road that they've got to face from late September into November. Look at this. In succession, they play Miami, only 6-7 and seven last year, but top 15 to 20 talent. Really good team, potentially. Should win nine games. Miami, that's the easiest team they're going to play in the stretch. Iowa, Michigan, Ohio State, Indiana on the road. Michigan State won that game last year, but Indiana has been a tough out. Won eight games last year. Minnesota, Penn State. Look at that stretch of seven games. That's more than half the schedule. Miami, Iowa, Michigan, Ohio State, Indiana, Minnesota. Then they've got the bye week before Penn State on the road. They finish with Rutgers and Maryland. You would think that they most likely will win both of those games, although the Maryland game on the road will not be uh, a sure thing. Michigan State football may be in for a rough go for a year or two, if not beyond that. I've got Sparty going, get this, 3-9, and 2-7 and seven in the Big Ten in Mel Tucker's first year in East Lansing. Your thoughts on Michigan State football in the comment section below. Of course, subscribe to our channel here if you love college football. If you don't, move on to somewhere else on YouTube. But if you love college football and you love the debate, discussion, and analysis right here, please lock it in. Right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.